The Red Skelton Hour, show number 1018, Children Should Be Seen But Not Had, VTR 11063, air date 61863. From Television City in Hollywood. Welcome home, darling. Sure you've got a headache. <laughs> Why take it out on her? It's the Red Skelton If you want to see a movie star there's no need to travel very far Don't you go to some row in the balcony When your own TV has more privacy Meet the actors that you'd like to know Without waiting for the late, late show Grab a chair over there and you'll watch them appear Right here, right here, right here Our guest stars <laughs> Isn't it funny? Before we go on the air, they tell the audience, now be sure and applaud, see? And then when the actors come out, they think, oh, please, no more, no more. <laughs> Thank you, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, our show is about the mean little kid, see, widow kid, I should say. But, um, now, you know, uh, that reminds me, when I was seven years old, I was voted as the kid most likely never to reach eight. <laughs> You know, and they, and, and a lot of things have changed since I was a little boy. I lived a very sheltered life. I was 26 years old before I realized that, that a girl wasn't a boy who needed a haircut. <laughs> hey, you know, when I was first born, the, the, the doctor walked out and he said to my father, congratulations, it's a baby. <laughs> And when I was very young, the first thing I learned to do, actually, before walk was to swim. I could stay uh, in water for oh, two and three minutes at a time. And it was stuffy in that bucket with them kittens. <laughs> you know, my mother and father were in vaudeville, see? And uh, they did a very dramatic act. I was born on the stage. Hmm? <laughs> can't get acts like them anymore. <laughs> Anyhow, the stage manager walked back after the first show and he says to my folks, he says, great act you got, but where'd you get that hokey finish? <laughs> it's really a, really a tough neighborhood. One day, a, a, a lady got a phone call and the guy says, this is, uh, your son is beating up everybody in a place. And she says, well, why call me? Call the police. She says, this is the police. <laughs> you know, some children can be cruel though, you know. Like, uh, when I was a kid, there was one little kid in the neighborhood, everybody called him Four Eyes, you know. Not because he wore glasses, he had four eyes. <laughs> and when I graduated from high school, I wasn't like those 18-year-olds. I was 31. <laughs> oh, and my daughter the other day, she's a teenager, you know, and um, we, oh, we took her to the doctor the other day, and they removed something that's been pressing against her ears for a long time. It's called a telephone. <laughs> 
what, doctors? I heard a joke now. There's a lady who went to the psychiatrist, and she says that, that my husband snores awful lot, and he thinks he's a refrigerator. So the doctor says, well, to stop the snoring, tell him to open his mouth. She says, I can't. That little light keeps me awake. <laughs> I've been dying to tell that, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry I did. <laughs> oh, I got one. Two seagulls, Gertrude and Heathcliff. <laughs> You're talking. And she said, uh, he said, Gertrude, you have been unfaithful to me. She said, I've been unfaithful to you. He said, yes. If we're seagulls, how come our kids pigeon toed? <laughs> hey, you like animal stories? Uh, I got one for you. Did you read about this lady? who uh, had this cat, and she, she dies, and she leaves this cat, see, $150,000, but she didn't get away with it. The dog sued and got half. <laughs> Can you imagine what, what could happen with a thing like that? You leave all your money to a cat? Wait, I'll show you. I'll do a little short little pantomime. Uh, not exactly a pantomime, but a little scene. <clears throat> I, being of sound body and mind, do hereby bequeath my entire estate of $200,000 to my cat. <laughs> In case of death to the cat, it goes to my faithful butler.
Tonight, Red Skelton, Phil Harris, and Alice Fay in Children Should Be Seen But Not Had. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Cavendish. Uh, well, the, uh, the usual? Yeah. Hello, Judy. <laughs> Back on the night shift, huh? You yeah. really think? Yeah. Here we go. Yeah, lay a big one on me, a double wall, though. Ain't you forgot something, Myrtle? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy, do I need this. Yeah. <laughs> Ma'am, that's coffee. Boy, Mr. Cavendish, the way you pack it away, you must have a mighty big problem. Yeah, I got a lot of troubles, Gertrude. You see, uh, I'm a married man. Oh, well, I kind of like those kind of problems. They keep my place busy. No, you ain't with me. You don't dig it, Jack. You see, uh, I love my wife. Uh, boy, you're a little drunker than I thought. <laughs> no, no, no. Now, look, let me get you straight. You see, uh, I have a son. Well, I think that's nice. Every man should have a son. No, but you don't understand. You see, compared to my junior, Dracula is the good fairy. <laughs> you see it, uh... Hilda, it all started about seven years ago. Miss Warren, that was fast thinking. Thank you. Now, uh, did anyone prepare the formula for the Lewis baby? I did. Fine, fine. Now, how about the uh, name tag for the Swanson baby? I took care of it. Good. Uh, did anyone give the vitamins to the Cavendish baby? I did. But I did. I did. No, I did that. Me too. So did I. Oh, me too. Oh, no. you mean that you all gave the Cavendish baby vitamins? Hmm. Oh, no. <laughs> Well, so now it's seven years later. What's he like? Well, let me put it this way. He's the kind of a kid that would put a rattlesnake in your pocket and then ask you for a match. <laughs> well, good night, Leroy. You're not going to drive. Well, in my condition, I got to. I can't walk. <laughs> Get you later. I'm going home and rock Junior to sleep. With real rocks. <laughs> oh, good night, girl. <laughs> Jenkins. Good evening, Mrs. Cavendish. Uh, did you forget your key? No. Junior swallowed it this morning. <laughs> oh, did you take him to the doctor to get it out? Are you kidding? Spend ten dollars for a fifteen-cent key? <laughs> Jenkins, what are you doing with all this barbed wire? It was Mr. Cavendish's idea to discourage Junior from sliding down the banister. Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> Junior! Junior, darling, mommy's home. I'm home, my mommy's home. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know, I'll be right down. No, no Junior, don't. Don't, Junior. <laughs> what a back <laughs> Boy, 
boy, that takes the itch out right down to the bone. Oh, boy, I got to get cooled off for a while. That was a hot... <laughs> oh, Junior. Boy. Baby, are you all right? Uh, I don't know till I take inventory. I probably left enough of me on that banister to put together another kid. Oh, <laughs> you poor little baby boy. Yeah, you poor little baby boy is right. From now on, when I'm naughty, you spank the banister. I'm gonna do just that. Jenkins, help baby out of the pond. Poor baby. Hey, Jenkins, did you put that barbed wire on the, on the, on the banister? I did. <laughs> Forgive me. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> As Confucius say, honorable brat should not hold grudge against honorable Fink Butler, who laughed up my day. <laughs> I'm not mad, though. Put her there. There you are! Junior! Shame on you, Junior! Yeah, help me out of here! Oh, oh no. No, no, you don't. No, no. Now, you help me out of here, or I'm going to tell. You're going to tell what? I'll tell all your ritzy friends that you used to be a pin boy down the bowling alley. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I was never a pin boy in a bowling alley. Oh, no. Set him up in the other alley, kid. Watch out, Goldie. Right. <laughs> I guess I left the bar too early. <laughs> oh, good evening, Elizabeth. I'm sorry you're not feeling well. <laughs> Right there, darling, that's the only way to fly. Hey, Daddy, come on, help you with a boy out of here before I drown. Before you drown, promises, promises. <laughs> oh, you love me. You know you're crazy about me. After all, I'm your firstborn. And last, right, Myrna? <laughs> Never mind, just help the baby out. Help him out. Yeah, get me out of here. My brain's getting me. waterlogged. <laughs> Yeah. Do it one time. Right. Hey, look at that. How about that? Pop sitting in his chaser. before breakfast again. Oh, but I'd like a pint of ham and eggs right now. <laughs> what happened? It's that son of yours. Ours! Let's not get it into one of those credit squabbles All again. Right. All, right. All right, that factory reject upstairs. <laughs> bet me that he could lean farther out the window than I could. And you were silly enough to take the bet? I not only took it, I won. <laughs> what was the prize? A skull fracture from here to my arches. What do you want? You know, dear, according to Dr. Spook, who? Dr. Spook. It's I'll very take it, I'll take it. <laughs> I want you to read this. Now, look, here's the case of a six-year-old problem child. For years, he'd been driving his parents crazy. He expressed his feelings in this manner. It's, it's really interesting. I want you to see this. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing. I'd like to write a book on Junior. I'd give anything in the world to run that cat through a typewriter. <laughs> Better not do that. I got a request not to. From me. <laughs> Last time I was going south and I met a Bob Wire going north. Wait a minute here. Look at this. A six year old kid whose parents refused to take him to the movies got so mad he cut his father's suspenders and emptied a fountain pen in his mother's ear. Oh, I do believe I've died and gone to heaven. <laughs> you mean to tell me a six year old kid did all that just because you wouldn't take him to the movie? Boy, have I been goofing off. <laughs> You may be mischievous, but one thing, he's not destructive. Uh, I know that. You dream, are you? Come in. 
I'll get it, honey. See, that fall didn't bother me at all. I'm all right. Hey, Daddy, can I go to the movie? No. Oh, how sweet he refused. <laughs> Oh, come on, let's go to the movie. I told you no. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Mommy. Nobody wears pokey dot shorts <laughs> with striped socks anyhow. Now, can I go to the movie? I said no. I told you. <laughs> That's good. Hey, you know, dear Junior's right. Your socks and shorts do clash. <laughs> I'm going to tell you one thing. Hold up my pants, I'll knock his brains. Uh, I you... promise to love, honor, and obey, not hold up your pants. <laughs> because his folks wouldn't take him to the movie. What's that about the... Oh, love coming down for... I'm only seven years old. What am I doing? I can't read. Let mommy help you. Oh. He emptied the fountain pen in his mother's ear. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That is good. <laughs> Say, Thelma. <laughs> you got... I'm not Thelma. Have you got, have you got a, a, a fountain pen? Just happened to have one on me. <laughs> I told you a thousand times this is community property and you're entitled to half of the torture. Lie there. Sorry, I'm going to retract everything I said. I'm sorry. No, Darling, pucker I didn't up mean your it. ear. Here Mommy I come. Mommy, you know. mean it. Mommy. Uh, it's not Mommy, a retractable fountain. Junior. Junior. <laughs> 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 That's a good one. Yeah, it's a damn... Hey, I got a Jim Dandy idea. What? Why don't we take Junior to the movies? Yeah! Let's... You don't like that finish? Yeah. Then let's go back to here. <laughs> What kid picture? Lolita. <laughs> That's a kid picture. That's for adults only. And you're not an adult. I will be after I see that picture. You are not going to that picture. I am going home. You are not going to that picture. <laughs> Look, we got a problem. I'll tell you something, honey. They're never going to believe his size that he's a little kid. Now, we're not going to get him in for half fair. You've got to get on your knees, Junior. And what do you do if I don't? This. Oh. You see, when you ask me nicely, I'll do anything. <laughs> see, I'm glad you're taking Dr. Spook's advice. You uh -huh. haven't laid a hand on him. No, he uh -huh. hates me. That's what he does. He hates me. That's what he does. Oh, no, not always, Junior. Only since you were born. <laughs> well, that's not so long, is it? Oh, I'm sorry, kiddo. I didn't realize that. Here. <laughs> Two adults and one creep, please. My, you're a cute little boy. <laughs> yeah, what you got in mind? <laughs> I'm only seven years old, you know. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. And what are you going to be when you grow up? Well, I want to be about this big. Wait a minute. <laughs> Six feet tall. You... you owe me another dollar. Are you charging by age or by the end? <laughs> Silly. Look, I'm still a little kid. Look, I got me baby teeth. Look. <laughs> you get away from me. I'm not going to get... Give me my ticket. I'm going in here. Two adults and one freak! <laughs>
exactly what's happened up to now. Shh. That ain't much of a plot. <laughs> you didn't miss much, did I? Junior, your father had to pay for 45 children's tickets. What a waste of money. Not a waste of money. All you gotta do is have 44 more kids. <laughs> To you, I'd rather rent. <laughs> this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my life. Shh! Hey, don't look now, but you're developing a slow leak. <laughs> well, we can't get seats together. Looks like Junior will have to sit by himself. Well, that's the best break I've had in seven right, years. Sit on you. One for you over there. Go on. Okay. Junior, sit down here. Good boy. I'll, I'll sit down here. Oh, my toes! My toes! My toes! My feet! Right. <laughs> I guess some people just come to the movie to change seats. <laughs> Get back to your rent car. <laughs> sit over there and let Mommy sit here. Be a good boy. Now, go on. Hey, I can't go do it too. Go on. Ah! <laughs> the people are trying to watch the movie. You are sitting in my lap. So what? You're not sitting in it. <laughs> Get off your lap, man. Here, do it. Oh! Ah! I sit you sit in your lap with your stomach is big. Hey, you big fat snob. <laughs> Can I get you there? Blimp over here. Hey, that's a good movie, isn't it? Ah! That's the first time I ever sat in a seat and it sat back. <laughs> I got, give me two here, lady. I got two, two, two. Hey, mommy, I'm losing interest in my tricycle. <laughs> yeah. Cecil, you're back on Daddy's lap. <laughs> well, so what? I'm your little boy, isn't I? Yeah. And you know that song? Climb up on my knee, Johnny boy. Oh. Oh, you're only three, Sonny boy. There's no way of showing. Yeah, no way of knowing. Oh, why you mean to me, Who started that? Al Jokic. Well, Al, sit down. Me, I'll go over in that middle seat. Where? Bakersfield. <laughs> Pardon me, Dad. Can I get you there again? Pardon me, Dad. Oh, you tiny boy. <laughs> Young man, would you mind removing your hat? Why? Who died? <laughs> I've seen that picture before. He just died. <laughs> oh, what a coward, though. I would have walked right in there without the guns. I would say, go ahead and shoot me. And they would shoot me three or four times. And then I'd let them take a knife and stab me four or five times. And then cut me head off and let it roll. Oh, no! No, no, no. Oh, no! What's the matter, baby? I scared me, Dad. <laughs> you get back to your seat. Be a good boy. Go yeah. On. Go on. Be a good boy. Go on. I'm getting hungry. They serve any beef stew out there? Yeah. Halloween's a little late this year. <laughs> hey, Mrs. Zorba. <laughs> would you mind... <laughs> would you mind removing your hat? This happens to be my hair. Well, then, would you mind removing your hat? <laughs> hey, look at that. I never see so much hair in all my life. Boy, oh boy. Looks like Yul Brynner's nightmare. <laughs> boy, if I do what I'm thinking, I'm really going to get the whip. <laughs> oh, why not? I'm going to do that. What difference do it make? Yeah, I hope. <laughs> Do 
anybody can use that. There, Charlie. <laughs> well, why not do a public service and get rid of all of us? <laughs> No, no, no! Why was two cents I knocked Here's eight hundred dollars. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, Phil Harris and Alice Faye. Let's go slumming. Take me slumming. Let's go slumming on Park Avenue. Why not? Let us hide behind a pair of fancy glasses. Glosses. And make faces when a member of the clothes Yeah. Passes. Let's go smelling where they're dwelling. Sniffing everything the way they do. White. Let us go to it. They do it. Why can't we do it too? Right. Let's go slumming, no thumbing on Park Avenue. Let's go slumming. Let's go slumming. Take me slumming. Everybody's coming. Let's go slumming on Park Avenue. That's what we'll do. Slumming, no stumming on Park Avenue. Won't you come with me to Alabama? Let's go see my dear old mama. She's frying eggs and growing hammy. That's what I like about the South. There, you can make no mistake. He with us, nurse, and never shaky. Hold it there. Stealing my bread and butter, Lillian. Lillian? You, you mean Lillian Russell? Yeah, yeah, that'll play. I'll go to that. Well, honey, you just wait right here and I'll see if I can rustle up a bustle. Hey, fellas. How would you like a grandmother like that? Would you believe it? I've been married to Alice for 21 years. She still calls me Mr. Harris. <laughs> That's class. With money. <laughs> Isn't she cute? Doesn't she look young? You know, old man time can knock your roof in if he sets his mind to it. And speaking about the old man, hey, Rose. Rose David. <laughs> Keep them cats over the back, will you? The natives are getting restless, man. <laughs> seen. He gives you youth, then he steals it away. He takes your nice curly hair, then turns it gray. Makes you rich, makes you poor. He's a dog, that's for sure. All your dreams and your schemes ain't worth the dime. So ball it up big every day, cause you'll never get away. From that old man, old man time. Yeah, old man time. That bugaboo. Every year, he changes you. 
He bends your back, dims your eyes, and you see less. You quake and shake when he's through, you're a mess. But there's one thing he can't change, love that's true, stays the same. It goes on, on and on in any climb. So you don't ever have to fret, fall in love and you'll forget about that old man, old man time. He gives you beauty, charm and grace, then puts wrinkles in your face. That old man, old man time. And the band played on He'd glide across the floor With the girl he adored And the band played on But his brain was so loaded It nearly exploded The poor girl would shake with alarm He'd nail leave the girl With the strawberry curls And the band played on The Silent Spot, starring Red Skelton in The Proposal. Ha, 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 ha. 
Don't go away. Red will be back in a minute. Here he is again, Red Skelton. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of our sponsors and our staff, may we thank you for allowing us to be a part of your evening. So until next week, we'll say goodbye for now, and may God bless. Good night. Thank you.